Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. So it's uh, a bit of a good news to share this morning about the Emir of Kajuru being, you know, released from captivity after he was abducted on Sunday. And joining us to discuss this is the Galadima of Kajura, Mr. Dahiru Abubakar. Good morning, um, Alhaji Abubakar. Good morning, how are you? Fine. So tell us, what is Thank the you. mood like in Kajuru Emirates regarding the release of the Emir? It was a joyous mood all over the town. All children that were attending Quranic and Islamic groups during the time that the Emir returned, all abandoned classes, everybody rushed, even uh, married women in their various homes, converged on the palace to see for themselves the arrival of the royal pioneer. Okay, is there any information you can share with us with regards to his release? Um, initially, we had heard the bandits had uh, demanded, or kidnappers rather, had demanded about 200 million naira. Uh, so is there any information you can share with us with regards to uh, payment of ransom or negotiation that led to his release? Actually, we don't have any information regarding whether money has been uh, paid because this uh, release came abruptly. I knew there was discussion between the children of his uh, Royal Highness and uh, the uh, kidnappers. As he said, they demanded in the first place about 200 million naira, but negotiation was going on, on and on like that. Up to the time we left the palace, around five something, because uh, we realized visitors that come to condole us actually seem to be coming because of security threat. So I was about to reach my home when this news broke out that the Emir has returned. So I rushed up to the palace. Convergence of so many people there will not allow us to discuss anything. So we decided to allow him to rest, to prepare him to more uh, today, so that he will be able to address people. Okay. But later on, the government actually invited him back to Juna for thorough medical checkup. Okay. So he has not left in Kaju. Okay. So you see, we don't we we'll know to discuss anything about whether money has been paid now. Okay, Alaj Abubakar, um, we're aware he was kidnapped alongside with his wives and other members of his family. Some news reports say 10, others say 13. Can you confirm for us how many people were kidnapped um, with the Emir on Sunday? And did he come back with any of them, or was it just the Emir who was released? In the first place, the number of people kidnapped alongside his pilot were 14. So okay. he himself alone was the only person that returned. We are given assurances that the rest are on their way. Expectedly, we are even expecting that they will come as yesterday. But up to this time, we are still expecting. We are living in nervous expectancy of, of, their, uh, of their arrival. Okay. okay. Well, could you could you also um, walk us back to Sunday? Um, okay. What what can you hear me, um, Elijah yeah, Bubaka? Uh, okay. I want you to walk us back to the events of Sunday. Um, what exactly happened? Um, where did the Emir need to be that he had to leave? You know, regarding the um, kidnap, and how did you hear about it? Yeah, somebody actually was a cut. So when they released him, they sent him strong message that he should deliver to the Emir. This I was told much later. So I mean there was prior information, but he had discussed this with some of the security people. But unfortunately, 
no strategic action has been taken to safeguard the uh, happening as it happened on Sunday. So unfortunately, everybody played it down. Around midnight, they combined on the town of Kachu like a military assault. Every nook and cranny on the houses in Kachu were covered by them. We don't have actually exact number of the terrorists that can came for it. But conservatively, we think uh, there are more than 200. Uh, the more later. than 200 carried out the attack, or there's more than 200 in Kajuru? Yes. Can, I'm, I'm trying to be clear. Are you saying that it was more than 200 of these um, bandits or terrorists that kidnapped the emir? Or are you saying there's more than 200 of these people in Kajuru? They came from that number, but not that number compared on the palace. They have made their own strategic arrangement and plan so that nobody will come with all uh, what he said when they strike. Okay. You understand me? Yeah. So, so I, I want, I want you to... Nobody will ever come to give any help. So that's how they succeeded. Silently. All right, Elijah Bubaka, I, I want you to share with us, you, the, the MR, M, MER, I beg your pardon, should have some level of security. Um, so, so if he can be so easily kidnapped, what exactly is the situation uh, like, or the security situation like in, in Kajuru Emirate? Um, is there the presence of any level of security? Do the people feel safe? And now you're saying that they are rejoicing. Is it rejoicing temporarily until the next attack happens? No, we don't hope for the next attack. Actually, there, there is a military output in Kajiu. But these people knew how they learned their thing. They had been monitoring. And they knew how they would do it. And they did it. Our only consolation and thankfulness to God is that they have not killed anybody. Nobody was injured. They did it silently and went away. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, Elijah Wubaka, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so what steps are the people of Kajuru, especially the Kajuru Emirates, doing now to ensure that there is, you know, security in that town to ensure that there is no reoccurrence of such an invasion? Like every other thing, people have to learn a lesson. We'll say that we have learned a big lesson. Canfors will do whatever we can to make preparation for our own private arrangement as far as security is concerned, not only on the leadership or the hierarchy of the traditional administration, rather of all and sundry in Kadu will try to evolve, evolve ways and means that we can checkmate any threat to our Hey, can, okay. can you share any, any examples of some of these tactics that you may need to employ now uh, to protect um, uh, the residents and indigents of Kajuru? Um, if, I'm, if I'm to reveal this, I will be preempted. Security doesn't play in that way. We intend to propose it, but we will not discuss it. You, you said about 200 stormed the Emirate um, or the community exactly. that day um, exactly. to carry out this, uh, this attack. Yes. Is any of these 200 that might be familiar to people in the community? Does you know, anybody know who these people are? Are they members of the community? Are they members of the local government? Or are they foreigners? Most of them are not indigenous uh, people. 
They are not indigenous because uh, some of our Jews that peep through the holes in, the, in their windows can see them. Some of them are so tall, but they are all young men. All young men. So their identity could not be established. But sources confirm that they are not the normal people that we see around. Hmm. Alaja Abubakar, I, I think this is a very interesting case for the yeah. Emir of, you know, Kajuru Emirates to have been kidnapped, in, you know, in such an invasion of over 200, you know, bandits. Do you have any idea why exactly the Emir might have been a subject of attack? Precisely, I cannot say. As far as I know, our Emir has been very kind to all and sundry that reside within uh, his domain. Miraculously, we don't know what they have uh, they have been stopped for. Uh, maybe they have something against him with what all the But I know he's somebody who actually accommodates anybody, no matter a religious, tribal affiliation. No, he's always welcoming anybody from her. Hmm. All right. So do you think other emirs should, should be scared right now? Do you think other emirs should be afraid for their life, seeing how easily, you know, they just went into uh, Kajiri Emirates and, you know, abducted that emir? Oh, you see, he's not the first person, uh, the first emir, uh, the first uh, traditional ruler that has been uh, abducted. True. The first one in Akajuri local government was a uh, uh, Abomadara. He was abducted, though it was from his south. It was on the highway. Later, he was killed. So it's, it's not the first time. So are you saying this is now normal? Like, you know, you now ex accept this as a normal thing in the northern part of the country that an emir can just be kidnapped and nothing would be done about it? Also in Kaduna State. I'm not hoping for that. What I, I, I'm hoping is that this will be a lesson to the authorities concerned so that they should take necessary drastic measures to safeguard the occurrence or the occurrence of such a suddenly act on the traditional institution. Well, uh, there's a lot, a lot of these MRs. There's the first class, the second class, and the third class MRs, according to, um, you know, how Kaduna State is structured. Um, let's talk about the government now. A few times we've spoken with uh, the Commissioner of uh, Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruwan. Um, you know, of course, speaking on what the government is doing with regard to security. But let, let's hear from you. Do you think the Kaduna State government is doing well enough uh, with regards to protecting indigents of the uh, citizens of the state? And what more would you demand of Governor El Rufai? Uh, that question, I think I'll go straight and tell you that the Kaduna State government is doing what it could under the circumstances. That is totally of its topic. And we have to be mindful that the security arrangement in the country is vested in the federal ministry, uh, federal government. The state don't have security outfit of their own. So all these things, for him to give orders, it has to be relayed back to the federal setup before it is reversed back for action. Unlike a certain wire part, you'll be marching order and you'll be carried out. But I don't know. So the situation is so rather tense, and uh, most of the state governors, not only Kaduna state governors, become hand-tied as far as security is concerned, because they don't have the partner directly that would work under their command. Okay, well, w would you then also, let's move to the federal now, would you say that the federal government um, might have failed with you know, it, it, it's, it's, eff, its efforts um, concerning security. And is there, do you think there's going to be a point where the people of Kaduna State and the rest of northern Nigeria will be, you know, able to say enough is enough? 
Actually, all invitations went to that direction. If you could remember, some few months back, there has been a lot of calls and agitation for state police, state police, whatever. So all this, if there is adequate arrangement for the personnel, security personnel on the ground everywhere, and who are doing their job to the destruction of the scenery, I believe that call for state police will not have arrived. So it was indicating, point to that direction, that if nothing is done, on the part of the uh, federal government, state will now seek a legislative process that will entail the emergence in our country of state police. Okay, so you're saying basically at the end of the day that the mood in Kajuru is not one of fear amongst the residents that these bandits can invade again, but they're simply happy that the MA is back. Yes. Because it is unheard of since the uh, happening on this, uh, what do you call it, uh, kidnap, kidnap, it has not happened. We are so surprised as how he, he recklessly came back yesterday, just after AM hours. You see, so we noticed in our hours would do whatever we could in our own little way. The God is safety in our own safety as well. All right. So we, we wish we could get more information. So hopefully when the MS back from, you know, that bed rest and all the medical checkup, you know, we can get more information as to where he was taken, what exactly he passed or faced in the hands of the kidnappers and how exactly his freedom was negotiated. Uh, and uh, remaining 12 also. Yes, exactly. We also need to follow up um, Alaji Abubakar regarding the other 14 people that you say were abducted alongside the Emir and exactly how, you know, they need to be rescued uh, by the police. Alhaji Dahiru Abubakar Galadima of Kajuru Emirates, um, we thank you very much for uh, joining us this much. morning. And I give you my assurance that uh, any time there is new development, I will be happy as well. All right. Thank you and very thank much you. once again. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I try to, you know, imagine what it is like in a community where um, with the spate of kidnapping, you know, and like what he described, you know, besides the uh, Emir, um, there's also been, you know, other residents, um, maybe politicians, maybe just, you know, regular people in, this, in the community that have been kidnapped. Um, and how many people have had to go in, into debt, you know, because they had to borrow money to pay ransom. Pay ransom I mean, if the know. paramount ruler of a community can be kidnapped, it yes. just tells you what exactly people, you know, face. I mean, Senator Shosani mentioned that these kidnappers operated for about an hour, mm. unchallenged. How did 200 people, do you know how much it would look like for 200 people to be in one place? Armed. 200 armed, you know. On you motorcycles? Know, yeah. How do, where um, do they buy these motorcycles? It's, it's just, it seems, you know, funny when you hear things like this. How did 200 people storm a community? And Emirates, do you know how small that place should be or would be? And then they stormed that place and then they stormed the, 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 M, the Emirates Palace and they kidnapped him, kidnapped 14 other people. It's, it's Nobody, really unheard of how, you know, security has really turned into some sort of a joke in this country. Yeah. And the Emir returns. We have no idea how that was facilitated. If they demanded 200 million naira, I mean, there's no way this Galadima would tell me he's not aware of, you know, ransom paid. You no, know, seeing how close it's, it's, he is, you know, to, to, to the ruler. It's possible so, that they haven't gotten any information, you know, but what would be hard to believe it would be that... You know, after those resources were, you know, spent to kidnap him, you know, he simply just walked just away walks because exactly. they had, so, know, so what really was the essence of the kidnap? They supported England or, or whatever the reason There's is. really lots of questions um, that we need to ask and lots of um, answers we need regarding this. Yes, um, but this also, you know, is, is a reminder that, you know, from what he has described, um, there is lots of territory in Nigeria and in Kaduna State that are really not under the control of Nigerian security agencies. 
That's what it really just says. You know, if any area that has 200 people on motorcycles fully armed is not in, you know, within the control of the Nigerian security agencies, including the army and the DSS and whoever else that you want to call, um, and those people have, you know, enough of the guts and the audacity to carry out whatever attacks that they choose to carry out. And that's and despite that just, the denial that is, of yes, the state And that government. is just in Kajuru or in Kaduna State. So imagine what's going on in Zamfara and Borno State and Yobe and any of all I mean, was it, not, was it not in Borno State that we heard about Iswap and new administrative territories? Yeah. We had Governor Zulum too. come out, you know, just yesterday to say that, oh, that's not true. But we have facts that prove otherwise. Um, I'm just so, saying, imagine what's what's going on and how many of these people exist in, in Nigeria's territory. Um, so every other day that you hear about the army bombing, you know, bandit territories and hear that 13 people were killed and seven were killed and some of all of that, it really, for me, just means that there's, those things aren't, you know, in any way effective. And if you don't in any way have enough men on ground that are ready to give all they can, you know, logistics, you know, finances, equipment, um, uh, information, um, intelligence, whatever it is, to ensure that these people are completely kicked out of Nigeria, and not, not, you know, arresting them and then forgiving them and saying that they've repented. You know, not having people mention that, you know, what they're doing is not really bad, you know, it's, it's just, they're just kidnapping children, it's not like it's so bad. Um, we would never really, you know, get to the end of this. And when are the people going to get tired? And that's why I was asking him, people in Kajuru, you know, who have seen their emir get uh, uh, kidnapped. Emir. Okay. When are they going to get tired? All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're talking open grazing, 2023 presidency, and the little controversy surrounding all of that. We'll be back.